Let's first take a look at the molecule on the top here. And I can see that this molecule has two double bonds in it. So we've already covered how to name molecules that have two double bonds in it. Right? I could start numbering from the left or from the right, since it doesn't matter for this molecule. I'll just start from the right. So I get one, two, three, and four. And so we have a four carbon molecule. So but would be the root. And we have two double bonds. So it would be a diene. Right? So this would be butadiene right here. So butadiene, like that. The first double bond starts at carbon one, and the second double bond starts at carbon three. So one, three, butadiene. One, three, butadiene is an example of a conjugated diene. And the term conjugation refers to the alternating single and double bonds present in the molecule. Right? So let's go ahead and write conjugation here. And we can see that one, three, butadiene is conjugated. Right? You have a double bond followed by a single bond followed by a double bond. And Conjugated molecules are special because if I think about each carbon, um, each carbon in 1,3-butadiene, right? This carbon right here is sp2 hybridized. This carbon is sp2 hybridized. This one and this one are also sp2 hybridized. So I have, I have a four sp2 hybridized carbons. So let's go ahead and draw those carbons over here on the right. Since each one is sp2 hybridized, each of those carbons has a p orbital. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a p orbital on each of those four carbons there. And we can see that we have p orbitals right next door to each other. All right, so four p orbitals next to each other means that we can get some of those pi electrons to spread out throughout the molecule here. So because we're going to get delocalizations of delocalization of some of those pi electrons, that allows for a little bit extra stability for this conjugated diene. So in terms of what exactly is happening, I'm going to leave that for the, uh, for the video on molecular orbital theory. So we're going to do a video on 1,3-butadiene MO theory. So for right now, we just know it's a little bit more stable uh, due to the fact that it has uh, uh, p orbitals and sp2 hybridized carbons right next door to each other. This carbocation down here is similar because if I think about this carbon, right? This carbocation is sp2 hybridized. This carbon is sp2 hybridized, and this carbon is also sp2 hybridized. So each of those carbons is going to have a p orbital, and uh, we can also draw a resonance structure for this carbocation, right? So I can go ahead and put in my resonance bracket and arrows here, and I can think about these pi electrons moving over here to the right. And so let's go ahead and draw the results of that resonance structure. Here. Here. So the, uh, the, pi, the pi electrons moved over to the right, which means the carbocation is now on the carbon on the left, like that. And so this carbocation, it's a primary carbocation, which normally doesn't happen in organic chemistry. But this carbocation is resonance stabilized. We call this an allylic carbocation. So this is an allylic carbocation. So an allylic carbocation, which is more stable than a regular carbocation. You could draw a resonance structure for it. And of course, you could think about each carbon being sp2 hybridized. Right? So once again, we go ahead and draw our carbons. We think about each carbon being sp2 hybridized, hybridized meaning each carbon has a p orbital, which means that those electrons are, those, those two pi electrons are spread out or delocalized over all three of those carbons here. And that positive charge is spread out over those two carbons on the end as well in the resonance hybrid here. So an allylic carbocation is more stable than a regular carbocation. And now we're going to take a look at an addition reaction to a conjugated diene. And you're going to see that an allylic carbocation plays a major role in the mechanism. So let's look at the mechanism for an addition reaction to a conjugated diene here. So we're going to start with 1,3-butadiene. Uh, with, with so let's go ahead and draw that. And to 1,3-butadiene, we're going to add a hydrogen halide. So I'm going to go ahead and put HX right here as our generic hydrogen halide. I'm going to go ahead and number my 1,3-butadiene again. So I'm going to say that's 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we've seen the reaction of alkenes with hydrogen halides before. In, in that reaction, the pi, the pi electrons functioned as a base and picked up a proton from my hydrogen halide. So it's going to be a, 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 the exact same start here. So I'm going to say that the pi electrons between 1 and 2 are going to function as a base. So these pi electrons in here are going to pick up a proton, and these electrons would kick off onto your halogen like that. So now the question becomes, where does the proton add? The proton could add to carbon 1, or the proton could add to carbon 2. Let's go ahead and show the proton adding to carbon 1 to start with. So I'm going to show the proton adding to carbon 1 
like that. I still had a double bond between 3 and 4. I just took a bond away from carbon 2, so that's where my carbocation is going to go. And immediately you should see that that carbocation is an allylic carbocation. Right? So if I, if I look at this carbon that has the positive charge on it now at carbon 2, that's right next door to an sp2 hybridized carbon, and over here is an sp2 hybridized carbon as well. So that's an allylic carbocation. It's also a secondary allylic carbocation. If I think about uh, what would happen if the proton added onto carbon 2, let's go ahead and show that over here. So I could think about the proton adding to, to carbon 2, and so I'm going to show the proton adding onto carbon 2 right here, which means I took a bond away from carbon 1, which means my carbocation is at carbon 1. That's a primary carbocation. Right, so if I think about this carbon as having the positive charge on it, that's a primary carbocation. It's attached to one, only one other carbon. And that one other carbon does not have a p orbital. Right, That carbon is not sp2 hybridized. And so this is not an allylic carbocation. It's a primary carbocation that is not stabilized. So this does not form. Right, You're not going to see the proton add on to carbon 2. You're going to see the proton add on to carbon 1 in the mechanism, which creates a secondary allylic carbocation here, which is resonance stabilized. So if we think about the next step of the mechanism, right? Uh, we had a halogen with three lone pairs of electrons, which just picked up another lone pair. So we now have a halide anion. Right? So our, 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 our halide anion is negatively charged, which means that's going to function as our nucleophile. So we have, we have a nucleophile and we have an electrophile. Right? So opposite charges attract. A lone pair of electrons on my halide anion are going to attack my carbocation to form a new bond. Right? So if I go ahead and show the, uh, the product. Right, of nucleophilic attack at carbon 2. I'm going to still have my proton at carbon 1. I'm going to show my halogen has just added on to carbon 2 now. And I still have a double bond between carbon 3 and 4. So let me just go ahead and number my carbons again. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I just showed uh, my halogen adding to carbon 1, and uh, sorry, my proton adding to carbon 1, my halogen adding to carbon 2. This is the 1, 2 adduct. Right, so an addition reaction to a conjugated diene, this is one of the possible products that can form a 1,2 addict, where the proton adds on to carbon 1 and the halogen adds on to carbon 2. If I go back up to your, here to my allylic carbocation, I know I can draw a resonance structure for my allylic carbocation. So let's go ahead and uh, see what happens All right, if I draw a resonance structure for this, which would mean I would take these pi electrons and move them in here. So if I were to draw the results uh, the resulting resonance structure. My pi electrons now moved uh, between carbons 2 and carbon 3. I took a bond away from carbon 4, which means that is where my carbocation is now, like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, think about what's going to happen next. Well, of course, my, I still have my halide anion. Right, which with a negative one formal charge. So this time, my halide anions function as a nucleophile. It attacks my electrophile, which is at carbon four now. So if I were to draw the result of that nucleophilic attack, right, I added a proton onto carbon one. I have a double bond between carbon two and carbon three, and my halogen added onto carbon four. So let me go ahead and put in those lone pairs of electrons like that. And if I number. If I number my molecule 1, 2, 3, and 4, I can see that I added a halogen, uh, sorry, a proton onto 1 and a halogen onto 4. So this is the 1, 4 adduct. Right? So this is the 1, 4 adduct as a product here. And let me go ahead and put this other resonance bracket in here as well. So you can see that when you form an, all an allylic carbocation, right, it's possible to get two different products because of the resonance structure. You can get a 1, 2 adduct, and you can get a 1, 4 adduct. And it's necessary to think about both of these as, as being the products in your reaction. So in the next video, we're, we're going to uh, do an example of this addition reaction to conjugated dienes.